Hello YouTube, I'm back. This is Public Enemy Preacher back at you once again and just want to thank you so much for following, liking, and subscribing. Please share this video. This is going to be uh, Separation of Church and State Part 3. Um, let's just get right into it. So I left off when we were talking about what was going on with this one major company and how they, they were using herbicides and the herbicides that they were using can actually have an effect on your endocrine system and could affect uh, humans in such a way as to have them display homosexual behavior. These chemicals exist. We talked about the proof of such on last on last video. So. Uh, going further from that, and um, by the way, if you're new to this, just understand that um, what I do, what I'm trying to do is get churches also to speak up. We deal with these issues, and this is the real world that we live in, okay? So don't walk away Sunday with a false, false sense, rather, of security and uh, forget about where you live. But anyway, that's what I do. So genetically modified organisms. Yeah, let's talk about that, right? So what is that? Uh, well, it's pretty much self-exclamatory. That's what I said. It's, it's an organism that, and then they take it in a lab and they take genes, genes that they would like to uh, either have not expressed in perhaps the uh, food or the plant or genes that they want to express a little bit more. So these GMOs, uh, because they're dealing with it at a genetic level, I think it's a little bit controversial. Might want to leave that alone. Everybody has their opinion, but let me just give you some basics. I'm no scientist or anything like that, but hopefully I can give you a little bit of insight to why this would be a little bit of, a, of an issue for me. Um, even though it's very hard to stay away from, they're all over the place, right? You can't really go out there and get anything that's not genetically modified. So anyway, one of the let's deal with some of the common foods that are genetically modified. One of the most well known would have been uh, tomatoes. They I don't think that they ever hit the market, but back in the day, uh, they had a tomato and they wanted to cross it with a gene from a fish as to give tomatoes longer shelf life. Going forward from that, we do know that Briars, not sure if it's on the market or if they actually sold it, but Briars had a low fat brand of ice cream that does contain an antifreeze gene from some type of Arctic fish. I'll try to provide pictures so I can have these things up and so that you can see it. Now that right there is kind of kind of puzzling. It's, it's very troubling actually because you think about how complex uh, organisms are how the creator has made us uh, in such a way uh, and made our bodies and made this 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 earth the way that it is these are things that I think are maybe beyond the understanding of those who are in the labs I'm not trying to take anything away from them of their education but I think there's more coming down the chute than we know uh, what about how this stuff is gonna break down in your body I was with um, my wife the other day at the doctor and he used to be also a nutritionist and he was just breaking down some simple things about how you put food in your body and then break it down to the simple molecules of glucose and, and sodium and all that. So your body will take what you put in it and break it down to a molecular level, get all the way down there on the cellular level. See, we don't often think like that. We don't think about the cellular level we we just see ourselves as this big huge body and not understanding that your body is a community of cellular organisms okay all communicating it's not just you all of these are living things within you that make you up and they need nourishment and they get that from whatever you put in they get that from your food so your body is going to use what you put in it to rebuild. Guess what? You literally are what you eat. And if you understand that you are what you eat, that's why it's so important that we eat the right thing, that we eat uh, better than most people can. Uh, when you consider what we make here in America and the wages that we make, um, you, you can't really take care of family anymore. Uh, if you're the only one working, you need three, four incomes sometime to take care of family. But anyway, maybe that's 
for another video. These organisms have been banned in some countries. I mean, some countries have gotten hip to it and they just not having it. Some of it's banned, some of it's prohibited. Some of them have perhaps banned things like the cultivation in their country, but they allow for it to be import, which means that their citizens will still go to the grocery store and still find this. Some of the debate uh, is around whether or not the packaging should be labeled such to give people a choice okay you have a choice whether or not to eat this GMO that could potentially destroy your DNA and have you growing a pigtail or whatever you you know whatever you're gonna have we don't know we don't really know yet but you know or you could choose this over here that is not genetically modified maybe it's organic it's the same thing nutritionally that they tell you now they tell you that throw you off you can eat an apple that's organic and you can eat an apple that has been modified okay so if i eat an organic apple it's going to cost a little more it has the same nutritional value probably has the same amount of vitamin c and such okay great but if i eat the other one uh that's been genetically modified yeah it may have the same vitamin c and such and it's usually cheaper i mean the way things are financially it's easier to just eat cheaper right but cheaper don't mean better. I wonder if this is feeding into some of the health issues where there is some research behind that that you can go looking at, uh, looking for. So why isn't America doing a better job or is it doing a decent job of protecting us from these type of uh, organisms, these modified organisms? Well, I think it all goes back to money. Now, let me get on my soapbox for a minute and tell you a little something about this company called Monsanto. If you're hip to the game, you don't heard of Monsanto before. What they've been successful at doing is patenting life. Let that sink in for a minute. They have been successful in patenting life. Okay. So what happens when you're able to patent life? That's major, right? Why, why, first of all, why are you able, why is this even legal? It used to be illegal. Somehow, I don't know if they bought the judges, bought the system. Well, we know the system is bought, right? Don't we know that? Should know that by now, right? Uh, free Bill Cosby, right? So anyway, they have patented life. And when you have a patent, nobody can use your invention except without your consent. The problem with that is that they have patented certain seeds, certain corn seeds and some other seeds. You can go to their website and check this out. So because these things are patent, that's a problem because what's going to happen when plants breed? Well, plants don't breed like animals. The wind blows and they pollinate. So let's just say I'm a farmer and I'm keeping my fields best I can naturally. Uh, everything's organic. Everything's good. I don't have any Monsanto patented seed in my field, right? But let's say, you know, corner down the road here or however far away, you know, he wants to use some of that maybe he had a bad crop and he wants to use their seed as it may be resistant or to certain insects so he can have a higher yield so he put you know signs on with monsanto uses that the problem here though is that when the wind blows and my field and his field and the cross pollination happens well i'm going to end up with some seed that now has genetic modifications to it it's just a natural order of things that's that's just how it works but now here's what happens so i i it could be unbeknownst to me i, I may not know and but they come by and they have these inspections and speculations because see they already know cross pollination happens and they want to test your field to see if you have any of their patented seed right well they already know what they're going to find they, they already know they're going to find it and once they find it now fees and all kind of things can be put on you they can take you to court because they're going to say hey you were using our seed without our permission yeah that's that's where you live right the wind blows and you can go to jail for it. plants cross-pollinating and you can go to jail for it being a farmer we don't see that here in the city because our farmers out there 
uh, in the Great Plains of America, this is what they are dealing with, okay? We don't deal with it. We just go to the store and purchase this stuff. Even deeper than that, going further, this is where you live. You live in a country where these things actually happen. So going further, not just genetically modified organisms in your food. What about those of you who might need a transplant one day, organ transplant? Maybe you need a kidney. Maybe it's cosmetic. Maybe you got the your ear cut off and now, now you want a new one, right? Uh, whatever it might be. <laughs> yeah, they got that for you too. What happens with that? We are actually growing human organisms inside and on animals. Can y'all really, really believe that? If you don't believe me, CBS News, let me read something to you. Scientists take first steps to grow human organs in pigs. This is January 26, 2017. January 26, 2017. Read some of this. New York says scientists have grown human cells inside pig embryos, a very early step toward the goal of growing livers and other human organs in animals to transplant into people. Really? So, I was, I was talking with my wife, I asked her, I said, you know, because those of you that know me know uh, she has uh, some kidney issues. Would you accept a kidney that came out of a pig? Well, most people, if you put it to them like that, they wouldn't. And then maybe, maybe some people would actually take the risk and, and try it. I don't know. Maybe it's already been tried. Oh, Taylor, <laughs> they wouldn't do that, right? Well, maybe. What happens with the military? Do I need to remind you of the stealth helicopter project, the black projects and all those other things, the syphilis experiments that happened with the Tuskegee Airmen? Uh, that's where you live. It's not far fetched. But anyway, these things are happening. Continue to read. It says the cells made up just a tiny part of each embryo and the embryos were grown for only a few weeks. Researchers reported this on that Thursday. Such human animal research has raised ethical concerns. The U.S. government suspended taxpayer funding of these experiments in 2015. The New York uh, was done, and the New York experiment done in California and Spain was paid for by private foundations. Okay, that could kind of cause some problems. Let's go back up a little bit. Rewind. Let's let's go back to DNA. DNA. Uh, codes for proteins. It was, it's what makes you look how you look, shape how you shape, you are who you are because of DNA. Now, do you know that you, if, if especially if you're my age, you don't have any of the cells, same, uh, same cells in your body that you had when you were born. We grow, right? We add some, and then there's this replenishing process going on. Well, DNA is a big part of that. It keeps you looking how you look and everything of that nature and cold for the right proteins. So, but here's the question. Where does that material come from? Where does that material come from if your DNA is continuing to rebuild and cold for these different things? I don't know, maybe your food, maybe you really are what you eat. It has to get it from somewhere, right? So. Growing human organism, growing, growing ears on the backs of mice. No, literally, growing ears, things like that, on the backs of mice. Come on. Come on, man. All we really need to do is invest some money into getting back to the original. Now, let's let's just take it to the scripture. Let's Let's just look at it. If you want to look at it scripturally like this, go back to the beginning. I'm talking about chapter one, beginning, Genesis chapter one. The Lord says, or it said Elohim, gods, go look up the word. But anyway, it says that they were given every tree that yields fruit whose seed is within itself. And it was given to them for meat, didn't mean flesh meat. And not only that, if you go back and you look at the KJV, it's going to say he gave the same thing to the animals. What happened to that order? Hmm. 
gave the same thing to the animals. But anyway, my point for us is that I wonder what would happen if we had the originals, if we had pure seed, not Monsanto genetically modified patented seed, if we had the real stuff and allowed that to um, go throughout our body and saturate our body and allowed our DNA to rebuild on what the creator meant for it to be rebuilt on. Hmm, I don't know, maybe we'd live longer, maybe we'd be healthier. I believe so. But in this world, this is the world we live in. We live in an illusion. We live in sort of a matrix. And unfortunately, religion is a big part of that. It has you thinking that everything sometimes is okay. It's not okay. This is where you are. I believe that we ought to fight against what is evil, okay? Go ahead and expose that. And this is just one way I do it. You may not do it the way that I do it. This is the way that I do it. Um, that's why I'm the public enemy preacher. But anyway, I want to uh, invite you to keep on uh, looking out. I'm going to try to give even more detailed information. We'll pick up where we left off. Public enemy preacher, please like and subscribe. Be careful. You are what you eat.